Hello. Now, in this particular subject matter of the rite of passage, what is interesting because we speak about the herb, you know, and we speak about our the sacramental rites and, and, the, and the holy herb and the use of the holy herb. What we have to also recognize is that there's a rite of passage even with the use of this. Now, in the ghetto or on the streets, there's also a rite of passage, whether going and getting a filly or, or breaking it down, cleaning it out, rolling it up, so forth and so on. And that's a rite of passage right there, you know. Um, and there's a lot of rites of passages that we have that are, at, at I can't say at best, but are basically just byproducts of our experience of, of, of almost um, just grasping at straws, you understand, and, and just, just making do. It's like I call it, we have a chitlin's way of life as lost sheep. And what do I mean by chitlin's way of life? Well, the chitlins were the worst part of the, um, of the pig or, you know, the animal that was given to the so-called niggas, the bywords, the lost sheep, the beta is Papayel. The chitlins were given to them. And what we did, our, our women especially, is that they made the best out of the chitlins. And they made this very filthy, disgusting, despicable, unclean, and I know some of y'all may still like it, and I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not your taste buds. So I'm not judging on that. I'm judging it from a, a Torah, a God, a Jah-based perspective. It's, it's filthy, it's unclean. You know what I'm saying? It's unclean food. We are supposed to be a caduce people, a holy people. Therefore, a holy people eat holy food, in other words. And this is, this is very important for us to understand, even in the big picture. Of things, but anyway, be that as it may, our woman and the black woman should be credited in in the situation, um, not praised and worshipped and all this diva garbage that's going on. But in in a true sense, we must thank our black mothers, sisters, daughters, and wives, historically speaking, who tried to make the best out of the situation, and even took something like chitlins and and other other bits and pieces and scraps of food and made what they call today um, soul food. And, um, you know, through a combination of seasonings and, and other techniques. But this does not mean that soul food is our divine heritage. Soul food was us and our people making do with what they had to make do with because everything that belonged to them was stripped from them. So we have to we have to recognize that. But there's a lot of N words and Negroes who would like to make that our our culture, you know, our so called American culture. But it's not. It's just one of those things we had to do while we were in that situation. But now that our kinsman redeemer has been revealed to us in the person of Ketamawi Hala Selassie, and now that we recognize the Rastafari revelation, the half of the story that hasn't been told to us, it's important for us to study and to grow and to put into real-time application that which was taken from us, that which we lost. Not so much even just taken from us, our ancestors put a lot of it down. So we need to stop that, oh, they took this from us, when the, the, the scriptural, biblical, Jah-based truth is that we turned our backs on the law and the commandments and the way of Jah or the way of yod Hey, wow Hey. We turned our backs on him, and therefore he allowed the curses for disobedience, the law that's built into his creation, to work its way out and this is what led us to the Ethiopian Holocaust, transatlantic slave trade, to the Americas, the 400 plus years, to Willie Lynchism, to everything else that we experience, and even up to this very moment in time, because there are still many who do not want to recognize the half of the story that was told to them. So, now with that being said, before getting into the further teaching on the what we put up here, the bar mitzvah 
and the Walde to his eyes and the Waleta to his eyes and collectively speaking the Walude to his eyes, which is which which are the children becoming children of the command. Children of the commandment. Now this is note, this is not commandments, but it's the commandment. Remember the ten words called the Decalogue are actually one command. Now, I've been debating with some because some say, no, it's Ten Commandments, it's Ten Commandments. And I've said, well, show me in the scripture where it says Ten Commandments, where it says I have given you Ten Commandments. Every time they find the word Ten associated with the commandments, they find the Ten Words. They find it as Ten Words, whether you want to look in the Hebrew, whether you want to look in the Amharic, the Ethiopic, whether you want to look in the Greek, you're going to find it as Ten Words. But the sense of it always is the commandment. Now, yes, in Torah, there are, they say, 613 commandments, laws, statutes, judgments. This is looking at the whole volume of the law, and this is the whole expanded volume of it. But what was initially given to the Beit Israel were ten words, and the ten words were part of one commandment. This is why Hawariya, uh, uh, Yaakov, James, um, or Jacob, would say in his epistle that if you violate or if you don't keep one part of it, you violate the whole of it. Because he recognized and they recognized that it was, it was ten articles or ten words that were one command, one holistic unitary commandment. And this is what is need, needs to be understood from, from the very get-go. Because as long as you do you think that it's Ten Commandments, and this is this is this is part of how the devil was not able, Satan was not able to um, destroy what God has said, but he was able to twist and turn and 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 it, it, they say the devil's in the details. And here's another example of where the devil's in the detail. So for us, as we point that out, because of the singular use of tizaz, 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 is similar to the singular use of mitzvah or mitzvah here in bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah, which is the son of the commandment or the daughter of the commandment, because even they understand that the ten words are one command. This is one commandment. What was given to them on in, in Exodus chapter twenty was one commandment with ten with ten five ten articles. But it's one. It is one. It is one. This is why when we take our shimma, we take our shimma in this way, with with the left. Some people say the right no, it's the left hand, the left finger. You understand? In a raised position. Because if you understand sign language, you'll say, then this is very important. This is the opposite antithesis of this. You see, this is where we begin. We begin with that oneness. So this is still important as well on this particular subject matter of, of the rite of passage, of the bar, a mitzvah, of the weldet izaz, or Bat mitzvah, the waleta to Izaz, or the Banai mitzvah, or the walude to Izaz, and it's all a part of that subject matter of being born again, and understanding what are the first, what are the first steps, you know, saying what are the first principles, what are the the basic elementals, and the rite of passage is very important. Now, with that being said. When we speak about the, the Aishans or the herb, and we speak that the herb or the Aishans is holy, you know saying it's, it's a holy thing. But the way that it has been used because of ignorance, error, envy, and lack of education has been used in ways that are not very holy. So in order to restore our way of life and to be grounded on a firm foundation, these studies and the applications are very important. So when we talk about Aishans is, is a holy thing, there is a holy use to it. 
And we know from the world that there is an abuse to this as well. So this is one of the things in the areas that we'd like to um, touch on as well, you understand, because the, the, the ancient is the incense. But then if I were to ask you, how is the incense or the ancient used in tabernacle? Would you be able to answer me? If you cannot answer me on that, then you cannot use this and then say that you are using it as a holy, it's a holy thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a sacred thing. It's a sacramental thing. And see, on a certain level, Babylon knows that. So they know that what we're saying is correct, that the Aishans is the holy thing. You know what I'm saying? But yet they also know that we and the majority of our people have no inkling or clue. So when they ask questions, you have people stunned. They don't know how to answer these questions because they have not studied to show themselves approved. Gabachu Negar Gabachu. Okay. All right. 